Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on fundamentals of robotics. I'm Dr. Maddie Babayaso from Mecharidum and I'm more than honored to be your instructor today with another lesson on foundations necessary to express robot motion. This lesson also has a written version on our website. As always, watch the video first and then go read the reading. By doing so, you will understand and retain the Euler angles concept to express orientations for the rest of your life. In the lesson about the degrees of freedom of a robot, we learned that there are at least three parameters needed to express the orientation of a rigid body. In the previous lesson, we learned about the exponential coordinate representation of orientation, which is a three parameter uh, representation for the rotation matrix R and can parameterize the rotation matrix using a unit axis of rotation and the angle of rotation about that axis. There are also other explicit representations that are useful in different applications when dealing with orientations. In this lesson, we will talk about Euler angles and we'll see how we can use these uh, angles to parameterize an orientation. Consider the body frame B is instantaneously attached to a rigid body and was initially aligned with the space frame S. The ZYX Euler angles alpha, beta, gamma are specified by a rotation of the body by alpha about the body's Z axis, then by beta about the body's Y axis, and finally by gamma about the body's X axis. Then, the final orientation of the body can be found by the multiplication of the rotation operators about the z, y, and x axes. The rotation operators are found in the previous lesson on rotation matrices. And, the, and this equation for the final orientation of the body can be interpreted as starting from the initial orientation when the body frame is coincident with the space frame and thus R equal to identity matrix, then rotated by alpha about the body frame Z axis, then by beta about the body frame Y axis, and finally by gamma about the body frame X axis to reach the final orientation. Note the order in which the rotation operators are written. This simulation shows a demonstration of the Z, Y, X Euler angles to represent the orientation. Now let's solve the inverse problem. Meaning that if you are given an arbitrary orientation expressed by a rotation matrix R in big SO3 as R equal to its individual entries, does there exist alpha, beta, and gamma that satisfied the rotation uh, matrix found by rotation operators? In other words, can Euler angles represent all orientations? To solve this, we should equate the expression for the rotation matrix found for the Euler angles to the given rotation matrix. From the first two elements of the first column, we can find an expression for cosine beta. And from the third element of the first row, we can find the expression for sine beta. If cosine beta is not equal to zero and thus beta is not equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees, then the expressions for beta can be found as these equations. In the next slide, we will talk about this a tan 2 function and why is it important in robotics. a tan 2 y and x is a two-argument function that is similar to arctangent. But the difference is that since the arctangent of y over x is the same as the arctangent of minus y over minus x, then arctangent only returns angles in the range minus pi half and pi half. But a tan to y and x returns angle in the range minus pi and pi. 
and thus it's called a four quadrant arctangent. In other words, arctangent doesn't differentiate between angles in the first and third quadrant. And in robotics, we prefer the fourth quadrant arctangent to make the quadrant in which the angle lies more clear. So for the case when cosine beta is not equal to zero and thus beta is not equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees, we found beta uh, in the previous slide as these equations. Um, with the expressions for beta, we can find alpha and gamma using these equations. These equations for alpha, beta, and gamma constitute a solution for the inverse problem to the zyx Euler angles when um, cosine beta is not equal to zero. The zyx Euler angles can be shown in the three degrees of freedom robotic wrist mechanism in this figure. The wrist mechanism is, it, is in its zero position meaning that all three joint angles are set to zero. The ZYX Euler angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, refer to the angles of rotation about the three joint axes of the wrist mechanism, and the orientation of the end effector can be expressed by the rotation matrix that we discussed in the previous slides and we again presented here too. When beta is equal to 90 degrees, then the wrist mechanism will be in the position where alpha and gamma represent rotations in the opposite direction about the same vertical axis. This configuration is the singularity of the zy x Euler angles representation for big SO3 because gamma is no longer about the x axis and it's now about the z axis. Now let's find the expressions for Euler angles for a given rotation matrix R when cosine beta is equal to zero and thus beta is equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. When beta is equal to 90 degrees, then inserting the value for beta in the expression for the rotation matrix and then equating it to the given rotation matrix, we get this equation. From this equation, we can see that the entry in the third row and first column is equal to minus one. And we can find the difference between gamma and alpha with uh, any of these equations. One possible solution is when alpha is equal to zero and gamma can be calculated using any of the equations. When beta is equal to minus 90 degrees, then using the same approach as before and inserting the value for beta in the expression for the rotation matrix from the Euler angles and then equating it to the given orientation, we get the uh, similar equation as before like this. From this equation, it's evident that the entry in the third row and first column is equal to one. And alpha plus gamma can be calculated using any of these equations. One possible solution is when alpha is equal to zero and gamma can be calculated using any of the equations. Beta equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees is the singularity of the zy x Euler angle representation for big SO3, meaning that at those angles, there are infinitely many Euler angle representations for a given orientation. This is problematic in practical applications where the robot's controller will be confused at those configurations and can generate solutions that can cause problems. The case where beta is equal to 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees brings up a new discussion on other possible Euler angle representations that we call ZYZ Euler angles. We define the home position of the wrist mechanism 
as the position when beta is equal to 90 degrees because choosing the zero position for beta is kind of arbitrary. Then another three parameter representation alpha, beta, gamma for big SO3 that we call ZYZ Euler angles defines the resulting orientation of the end effector. The ZYZ Euler angles can be defined as a sequence of rotations, first about the body's Z axis, then about the body's Y axis, and finally about the body's Z axis. And the final orientation of the end effector can be found by the multiplication of the rotation operators. This simulation um, visualizes the ZYZ Euler angles. ZYZ Euler angles representation for the orientation is popular in robotics since most six degree of freedom industrial robots have their fourth axis as a rotation about the Z axis of the force joint. Then the fifth is a rotation about the y-axis of the fifth joint, and the final one is a rotation along the z-axis of the end effector as depicted in this figure. Visualize the movements of the Euler wrist uh, in this animation. The fourth axis is a rotation about the z-axis of the fourth joint. The fifth is a rotation about the y-axis of the fifth joint. And the final one is a rotation along the z-axis of the end effector. Please note that these are the two of the most common Euler angle representations, and different robotics companies can use different conventions for Euler angles. For instance, ABB uses the Z by X convention, while FANUC and KUKA uses the XYZ convention for Euler angles. The inverse solution is similar to before, and we can say that for every rotation R in big SO3, there exists a triple alpha, beta, and gamma that satisfies R equal to the rotation matrix from the Euler angles. To solve this, we equate the expression for the rotation matrix from the Euler angles to the given rotation matrix as this equation. From this equation, we can see that cosine of beta is equal to the entry of the third row and third column. And if sine beta is not equal to zero, and thus beta is not equal to an uh, integer multiple of pi, then, similar to before, the following solutions can be found for alpha, beta, and gamma. Now let's solve the case when sine beta is equal to zero. Then beta is equal to an integer multiple of pi. And we will have two cases. Case one is when k is an odd integer. Then cosine of beta is equal to minus one, and we will have these equations. From these equations, we can see that the entry on the third row of the third column is minus one. And the difference between gamma and alpha can be calculated using either of these equations. One possible solution is when alpha is equal to zero and gamma can be found using one of the equations. Case two is when k is an even integer. Then a cosine of beta is equal to one and we will have these equations. Now we can see that again, R33 is equal to one and alpha plus gamma can be uh, calculated using these equations. Again, one possible solution is when alpha is equal to zero and gamma can be found using one of the equations. Something to remember here is that if R is equal to the identity rotation, then using the equations that we just saw, we can say that the Z by Z Euler angles alpha zero minus alpha can represent the identity rotation. Therefore, there are infinitely many Z by Z Euler angles that can represent this orientation. And this is considered the singularity of the uh, representation, and we know that singularities can never be eliminated in any three-parameter representation of SO3.
in general, we can say that if rotation axis 1 is orthogonal to rotation axis 2, and rotation axis 2 is orthogonal to rotation axis 3, and axes 1 and 3 are not necessarily orthogonal to each other, then the three-parameter explicit representation for big SO3 can be expressed by Euler angles as successive rotation operators about these axes. Okay, let's see an example. We want to find ZXZ Euler angles for the orientation given by this rotation matrix. Similar to the approach for ZYX and ZYZ Euler angles, we can find the rotation matrix corresponding to the ZXZ Euler angles as this equation. It's straightforward. You can multiply three rotation operators and you can get the final rotation matrix. If we equate the given R to the rotation matrix from the Euler angles, then we can get... Um, the values for sine beta and cosine beta. Because we found two values for the sine beta, then we would have two cases. If sine beta is equal to 1 over a square root of 2, then beta is equal to 45 degrees, alpha is equal to 180 degrees, and gamma would be 45 degrees. On the other hand, if uh, sine beta is equal to minus uh, 1 over square root of 2, then beta is equal to minus 45 degrees, alpha is equal to 0 degrees, and gamma is equal to 225 degrees. So both sets of ZXZ Euler angles of uh, 180 degrees, 45 degrees, and 45 degrees, and also 0, minus 45 degrees, and 225 degrees can represent the rotation matrix for the given orientation. Now let's see that uh, the two sets of Euler angles will actually give the same orientation. So suppose that we have this frame 1, and I also chose the CATIA SOLIDWORKS convention, which, which is the ZXZ uh, Euler angles. And I will change the orientation only. I'm not uh, using the translation now, so I'm only interested in the orientation. So I change the Euler angles to be a rotation about... Uh, z axis by 180 degrees, a rotation about x by 45 degrees, and another rotation about z by 45 degrees. So this would be the final orientation by these sets of Euler angles. Now let's go back to the zero orientation and try the second set of Euler angles, which are 0, minus 45 degrees, and 225 degrees. Okay, this is the final orientation with the second set of Euler angles. You can see that uh, the orientation of the frame for both sets are the same. So um, one orientation have two representations, um, Euler angle representations. So two sets of different angles will give us the same orientation. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. Thank you for your attention and also supporting Mecharidov. I'm more than humbled to be with you in your path to learn robotics. To be honest, I wish I had access to lessons like this when I was a robotics student. And believe me, I get your frustration. Robotics can be hard because it's a multidisciplinary subject. But I promise you that after watching these videos and reading the text, you can solve any problem in related topics that they throw at you. In the next lesson, we will continue with the orientation and we'll see another explicit representation for the orientation. Don't forget to touch base and send us your feedback on how these lessons help you.
we'd love to hear from you. And also, we'd love to have you as part of our Mecredom family. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.